it is 115 degrees and almost October. That is crazy. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shamira Benson, one part of Team Benson, and it is time for a fall <laughs> garden tour. I say that because we are still hotter than all heck, guys. It is 100 and I think gonna be 110 today, and yesterday was 115 degrees. So let's see what is alive underneath my shade cloth, with, which should be up by now. I originally was preparing for fall planting. I was thinking, okay, you know what? Summer was rough. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and start planning out the fall. And so a lot of the things I already got in the ground, as you can see, there's some peppers. Now I did start with some starts just because one, me having starts is a little bit behind, but I will show you guys what we have started inside at the end of this video. So make sure you uh, keep, keep, on watching for that so I got a bunch of starts that were coming out because normally October 1st is our like actual you can plant day and normally we will plant maybe like a week beforehand like those of us that are a little like eager beaver but it's not 115 or 110 normally it's about like maybe those last hot days are gonna be like 90 degrees 95 degrees and you're just like oh well at least I can plant like some peppers it's warm it's very very warm but our nights are cooler but still our days are making things suffer so let me show you guys what we have going on so we're gonna start over here since I am over here and you guys can see all what we have we have some um, buttercup squash or butternut squash um, this was from Soro who gave it to me I went to go see it her garden now these ones are some of our lush and dew beans we have them right here I had four but as you can see the one on the end got it it got all the smoke <laughs> now our Brooklyn the most productive not sweet melon not cucumbery cucumber ever so guys Brooklyn's not like bad but Brooklyn's also not like good <laughs> and if she was good that would have been the best thing ever because I sorry guys about that that was the AC so what I was saying is that if Brooklyn had been good it would have been great because this is the most producing plant ever it actually produces more than what my Armenian cucumber produces and we are assuming that Brooklyn is a cross between an Armenian cucumber and some type of cantaloupe now <laughs> It does not taste, she doesn't taste like terrible. Like you can eat it, but it's not something you want to eat like over and over and over again. But she produces like crazy. Like literally more than my Armenian cucumber does. Like it is just nonstop guys. These are all the little babies. And then we have all of these, more little babies, more plants coming in. Oh wait, here's a big giant one right there. There's some over here, over there. And I haven't even gotten to this side <laughs> to show you guys like more over here look at how many of these things there are it is so insane hey guys so i just wanted to take a quick moment i want to interrupt this garden tour to thank our sponsor which is metri grow they sent me a 48 watt indoor grow system grow light system so i'm very excited because you guys know that i have struggled with being able to have enough room to start my indoor seedlings have a small space garden, we have a small space house. So room has become an issue with being able to hang things and be able to get them in a proper spot and be able to have it adjustable when my plants are growing. So this is gonna solve that issue because it is coming with a light stand and I am going to build it later on in the video. So make sure you guys keep watching and see how it turns out. But since Brooklyn isn't delicious, she has also become compost, which is nice because my worms never get like any type of fruit because we don't really grow a lot of melons. And when we do grow some melons, they don't produce like this. So I'm never really sharing that with my composting worms. So they have been loving it. There's a lot of like worm castings in my soil right now, even despite the heat, because they're eating through all of this melon slash cucumber combo. <laughs> 
Now also over here we have the okra. The okra has been producing all summer long and not bad, like at like a steady pace, but I think we're done with it. So I'm gonna actually pull the okra and start composting down in here. So basically I'm gonna put a lot of these melons when they're ripe down in the soil and I'm just gonna put like a layer of compost over it and then let the worms do their magical thing. Now over here, we have some primrose right here, and I'm not sure what that is. I think it might be like a hollyhock, but I'm not 100% sure. I had been putting seeds in here trying to get stuff to grow, like during the summer, and it just was not happening, but our evening primrose, it's not like the regular primrose, this one's an evening primrose, it's a medicinal one, and that one is growing like crazy. I'm trying to decide what I want in my medicinal bed this year. The evening primrose I definitely want because it's already growing, and I'm really interested to see what that flower is going to look like but I was thinking maybe trying Echinacea again or a couple of other things so I'm really interested to see what that other thing is whether it's like an actual medicinal plant or if it's just a weed. Now her lemongrass looks like hay but it'll be fine I'll just give it a big haircut and it'll grow back but we have our um, Malabar spinach right there and then underneath here we have planted some peppers. This is the first time in a while I've had peppers in the ground, but I have my jalapenos right there in the back. This um, eggplant isn't gonna stay right there. It's just, just right there for right now. And then we have some serrano peppers too. Now guys, I haven't planted peppers in the ground, like in one of my beds in a long time because I got um, black leaf spot one year and it was the most devastating thing ever. It was hard to get out of my ground. It took like seasons to get it out of the ground completely and that affects um, peppers and tomatoes and it was terrible, like absolutely terrible to get rid of. And so it just traumatized me and I've just never put peppers in the ground since then. But this year I am getting over my fear. I haven't had black leaf spot in any of my pots in years and so I'm getting over that fear. I've checked those plants, those starts that I had got, and I think that they're fine. So I went ahead and put my hot peppers right here because I have sweet peppers in other places because my goal is to grow a lot of sweet peppers to get those packed in the freezer this year since I grew a lot of hot peppers last year. But serranos and jalapenos, we use a ton of. Now we had a squirrel issue or a rodent issue or some type of issue. So my original San Marzano tomatoes that were here and here, got eaten. Luckily I hadn't planted one of them and so I planted that one in the middle and I just put a basket over it. Same thing with my indigo, I put a basket over that too. Underneath here we have re replaced Miss Eggy. That one is a black beauty eggplant though. So hopefully we have that one for a long period of time. The other one that was the start right here in this bed, that one is also a black beauty eggplant. We do have Big Nisi, which is Miss Eggy's daughter, and that one is a um, an Ichabob eggplant, but I want to try growing like some bigger eggplants because I haven't grown bigger eggplants in years. Like, I don't actually I don't think I've ever grown bigger e eggplants, and I want to make like some like Baba Gamouche, stuff like that, so I need some bigger eggplants for that. Now surprisingly over here we have one stevia plant that made it, super excited about that. My poor chickpeas have not made it so I'm hoping that they'll maybe come back. But I am glad that one stevia plant has made it. So this is where I'm going to put the other eggplant at. Now in the middle here we have some herbs going. We have a lemon thyme that it would have been fine by now but it is way too hot and it's just kind of suffering. So I put that one in the back. But we have some basil that's doing well, some oregano that's doing well. We have a ton of different peppers. These ones are green, red, and yellow peppers right here. And then these ones are new and they are, let's see what they are. They are Carmen Italians. And then I think this one is banana peppers. Yes, yeah, so that's what's over here are two banana peppers three Carmen Italians. Um, I was going to plant some of my sweet Marconis in here, but I wanted to get some peppers that were already started. 
So guys, as you know, everything in Arizona gardening is timing and we have missed a lot of that timing because we have been out on our homestead back and forth. And being able to make sure that I'm not missing the window for this garden is important because this garden is still feeding us and it's gonna feed us for this next year. So I wanna make sure that we get everything in the ground when it needs to be in the ground. Now, before I leave this area, there is um, Big Nisi. She is our namesake plant. That one is the Ichabob eggplant I was telling you guys about. Now on the back end over here amongst our trees, we have a lemon balm that is doing nicely right here. And then we also have our curry, our curry tree, which is grown a lot. Look at how beautiful that is. Like this is the top of my, um, my Vago dragon fruit bed and it is taller than that. So it is doing really, really good. And then over here we have our Malabar or dwarf Malabar, and that one really needs to get put out on the land. We have our grapevine. This one is Yuli, another one of our namesack plants. She's surviving the summer, which is like, oh, that poor, poor, poor plant. I know, it should be cooler by now. And then we have our dwarf Mexican lime, who is also like, what the heck? Because as you can see, she put off all of her normal growth that she does during this time, but it's hot. So her leaves are burning. Poor plant, I know, we just have to make it. It's gonna be okay. Now guys, I give my trees the umbrella, but I really don't do anything outside of that, especially like my mulberry, because it's, he, it's gonna get huge. So it has to be able to survive these summers. And I feel, in my opinion, that it just makes it a little bit stronger. I do hide my dwarf Mexican lime, so it's in an area that is like, it doesn't get blasted, blasted by the heat, but it still does get some heat. So I used to maybe try and put up a shade cloth underneath, like over that one, but I found that letting the sun just hit it and it getting used to the Arizona sun has made it a lot stronger, but that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Now our other Vago garden bed, we have planted out. We have some of the garlic that's up top. Something did come in and try to dig up my garlic too. A couple of them were out and I put them back in. So hopefully everything is fine with that. Underneath here we have some rosemary and in the very back we have a dill over there suffering. So the rosemary is fine though. We have a peppermint right here that is still in its pot. It needs to get planted. And then we have a moringa tree right there. So that's what we have growing right now in the outside garden. I am gonna take you guys indoors. One, because it is already hot. Like I cannot believe it's this early and I'm already sweating. So let's go inside and let me show you some of the seeds that are going. Plus, I got a new lighting system that I wanna show you guys. So let's go check it out. Okay guys, so we are inside right now and I have my metric row grow lights which i'm gonna show you guys now this is a 48 watt light system and it has like a remote control to it and it has like a chain so that you can hang it and it also has like a complete stand so that i can attach it to it to be able to use it as a light stand instead of like hanging it now i've had some really big issues in the past especially when Arizona doesn't cool down. So essentially what happens is I take my starts out of my grow area, which I will show you guys, and then as I up pot them, I then move them to my back door. Well, when it's 116 degrees and it's not breaking, then all of like my cooler vegetables, like my, um, my lettuces, my broccolis, my kale, my collards, all of those different things then burn up at my back door because it's too hot. But in order for me to be able to get enough starts going through, I have to move those starts somewhere else. So I wanna show you guys what I got going on and then how I'm going to use this as a solution. And I'm also gonna build this for you real quick and so that that way you can see what it looks like and hopefully everything will be fine. <laughs> Okay guys, so here is my current like grow light setup. Now, as you can see, I just have like a tension rod just with some um, command strip things to make sure that it doesn't fall. And then I got these from Home Depot that hang and they hook on there and then just grow lights in there. Now, 
it's nice because it happens and it grows and everything's fine but then it gets too big and it's not like adjustable also also i only have this one shelf that's all i have available so then when these start to grow like this i want to get them up and out of here so that then i can start new things so the metro grow system is going to be my solution instead of letting them roast by the back door and hoping for the best i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put them on a stand and then i have a table that i'm going to set them on so let's get it built okay guys so i found a little space right here and now we have the problem solved i just have a little table that it's sitting on and then i am going to up pot all of these because i do want to uh, plant some more starts and get them going but right now everything is getting lit up i was able to fit two of these over here which is perfect because normally i have two ready to go at a time and if you guys are looking up here i want to show you guys this they have a little um, remote that you can use either wi-fi or no wi-fi you can change the strength from being 50 percent to a hundred percent you can also set a timer for it and then also decide if it's going to be veggies or a flower so that's pretty cool that is going to solve the problem of my veggies burning up at the back because that has been a huge problem. Usually I lose at least a fourth of our veggies just because it gets too hot one day or something like that. And with these temperatures being the way that they are, I'm really afraid of putting like my kale right back there because I know that it will just burn up. But we have to get some more stuff started. <laughs> We have to get some more stuff started. I say that because I am behind, guys. So thank you, Metrogrow, for sending me that. If you guys want to check it out, there's going to be a link down below it onto Amazon because I do have it on Amazon. And then, yeah, you guys can pick one up for yourselves. So I hope you guys have had a great Sunday. I know things in the world have been crazy. I'm praying for all of my people and my family and my friends and all of you guys in Florida and that whole trail of the hurricane. I know that that has been really, really stressful. We have some family down there and some friends too. And it's it's been very, very stressful. So I'm praying for all of you guys and make sure you guys are staying safe. And yeah, until next time guys, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye, guys.